Hello, my name's Roy. I'm an MK Ultra survivor, also known as a targeted individual. And I've got the pleasure of uh, meeting Matthew today. And Matthew contacted me and he, he said he'd like to tell a little bit of his story. Um, Matthew's from Ontario. And uh, basically, we've got to try and get Matthew some uh, friends in Canada. And we and sadly, Matthew's homeless because of the targeting program. And um, it's lovely to see you, Matthew. Uh, over to you, my friend. Yeah, thank you, Roy. I appreciate you having me on the interview. I really do. My pleasure. So where did it where where did it start, and why you, Matthew? My targeting first started around like five, six years ago in Alberta. And it was kind of like an overnight thing. You know what I mean? Um, I was kind of hanging around people I shouldn't have. You know what I mean? Um, and I was like at the point in my life where I was like, yo, I got to get away from these people. I was done college at that point in time. So I was like, you know what? Let's just go to BC for a little bit. There's too many people around my part of town that are causing me problems. You know what I mean? And so I'm, I get a friend that he was a pastor in a church. I called him and I was like, can you give me a lift to Jasper, Alberta? And he was like, sure, I'll give you a lift. And on the way to Jasper, his alignment went out on his car and the tires started kind of like moving and shaking. And he was like, we're only in Hinton, which is an hour away from Jasper. He was like, yo, I can't really continue going all the way to Jasper, then drive all the way back to five hours. I'm going to let you go in Hinton. Even Gate offered me like 300 bucks. He's like, yo, do you want some money for a hotel for the night? I'm like, no, Connor, like just the ride is enough. You know what I mean? And um, then I'm in Hinton, Hinton, Alberta for a little bit. I'm stuck there, right? And I'm like, I'm stuck there. I went to Wallfair. I went through everything. And um, I asked if they could pay my ticket to go to um, Jasper. You know what I mean? And they're pretty much like, we can't help you. Um, you're going to have to call a family. So I left the welfare office. I stayed in Hinton for another day or two. And like, I honestly did not know what I was going to do. And um, I was walking through a parking lot, like a, a Walmart parking lot. And I seen a credit card on the ground. You know what I mean? And I'm like, you know what? Like, I shouldn't do this, but like, I'm stuck here. I'm going to use this credit card just to pay for a bus ticket. And if the police ask me what happened, I'll, I'll be honest with them. I'll straight tell them I was in a bad situation. And that's, that's the honest truth. And I went to um the corner store. I bought like a prepaid visa with it. Like I tapped it. And I bought a ticket to go to BC with it. And, um... And I went to a hotel for the night. I purchased a motel, the cheapest one I can get. And um, I stayed there for the night. The next morning I left. I was in the parking lot of the motel still. I called my mother just to let her know that um, I did end up getting the money to go to BC. So she wasn't worrying, you know. And out of nowhere, the RCMP just boom, 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 boom. Like four cars coming to nowhere in the parking lot. They didn't even say my name, nothing. They just come up to me casually. They're like, yo, you're you're being arrested right now. I'm like, for what? They're like, they're like credit card fraud. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what I mean? Like within like 12 hours, 20 hours. I was like, how does this happen? You know what I mean? And they brought brought me to the police station. They're really nice to me. They just put me in a cell, came, came back out two hours later with a promise to appear. But it wasn't for like a year and a half from then. I'm like, why would they put it so far away? You know what I mean? I'm not even from this this part of town. I'm not even from Hinton. Why would this be the case? Um, And then I leave, and then I get to BC. I meet up with a friend of mine, and we're kind of hanging out, making some money. And I just start noticing things, like cars going by me. And, like, as they go by, like, they look into your soul and they're, like, mm -hmm, giving you a dirty stare. And, like, then they hit their gas and they go. And it's, like, oh, okay, weird. But after, like, days on days and days of, like, you know you're getting followed 100%. Like, you know what I mean? And I'm hanging out with, hanging out with somebody and they're kind of more serious people. So, like, I didn't really want to be, like, yo, I'm being followed to them. They would have been like, well, why were you hanging out with me for the past week if you think you're being followed? You know what I mean? It would have caused problems for me. 
So I kind of was just like, yo, I'm tired and stuff. I got to get out of here. You know what I mean? I called a, I called a friend, like an old coworker. Um, she was living on the island, like just off Vancouver. And she was like, yeah, come over. So I was like, all right. I go downtown. I'm trying to get on a bus. And these buses would not pick me up. They just they just drove Ray Bun looking at. Me. To the point where like the third bus came out and I jumped in front of the bus, sort of waving my hands, and I'm like, like, yo, I need this bus. I get on the bus, he's like, he's like, Where are you going? As soon as I get on the bus, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like I don't even know why this guy was so like angry with me. I'm like, I don't even know where I'm going, sir. He's like, get on the bus, you know what I mean? I get on the bus and like I was downtown town Vancouver and I had to go to North Vancouver. So um you gotta go over a bridge. And what do you know? I'm on this, I'm on this bus. And like the whole time I just had like really bad anxiety. I did not know what was going on. I knew I was being followed by like how many people. And it's like, this can't be just like a couple of clowns are running around doing this. This has to be some serious shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? I didn't know what I got myself into. And I'm on the bus and then we're about to cross over the bridge to get to North Vancouver. And what do you know? There's like the police are blocking off the bridge. They're like, oh, there's like half an inch of snow on the bridge. It's not safe for cars to travel over. And I'm like, I get off the bus. I'm like, you can't stop me from walking across this bridge. I'm going to North Vancouver. They're like, whatever. So I start walking across this bridge. Um, and it's got a weird feeling in my stomach. I look behind me. I looked ahead of me. I couldn't see the end of the bridge or the beginning. I look over the edge and it was like 200 feet below where like freezing rapids and shit. I'm like, if someone came up to me right now and just grabbed me like a car and tried to throw me off this, I'd be cooked. I don't even know why I was thinking like that, but realistically, like, I was going through some weird stuff. And I get to, I get over the, the, um, to North Vancouver. There's a McDonald's right on the other side. So I go to it. It's around 1030 at night. And as soon as I get there, I went to the bathroom to go use it, but it was locked. So I knocked on the door. And, like, a guy, a guy came out, like, doing drugs. He's like, yo, I'm in here getting high and stuff. Leave me alone. I'm like, whatever. So I go buy food. And I go sit down with this, like, older lady. I just literally sat down. I had so much on my mind. I didn't even ask if I could sit down. She's like, oh, hello. How's your night going? I'm like, it's going okay, ma'am. Just try not to, like, start rambling about what's been going on. And then I, I, I start eating my uh, McDouble. I look out the window. And you see a car pull up, like maybe like 150 yards, 200 yards in the darkness away. No one's in this parking lot. It's raining and stuff. See this car pull up, click the high beams, turn it off. The door opens up. And like, he literally went like this using the door as a, as something to like balance a barrel on. I'm like, I look at this old lady. I'm about to say like, yo, there's a guy with a fucking gun outside excuse my language and she 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 sees me looking out the window so she looks over at this time i'm like is this even happening like this does not happen and she looks out the window she's like oh my god there's a guy with a gun someone should call the police i'm like someone should call the fucking police you know sorry service wearing right someone should call the police right now so i go up to the counter i'm like yo i need the phone right now to call the police they're like you need the phone Call the police. What's the matter? Are you sure? I'm like, there's a guy with a gun outside right now. You don't think a 223 can't pierce through that window in someone's skull? Then all of a sudden, a guy comes up behind me, grabs me, because I kind of butted in line to people waiting. And he's like, don't worry, buddy. I'll take care of that guy outside with the gun. I go in my mind. I'm like, this random guy is going to go take out care of a guy with it. Like, you know what I mean? It wasn't making sense. So I... So I go back, sit with this old lady, and then right after, the, the manager comes up to me, and he's like, yeah, you can't stay here any longer. You've been here too long. I'm like, sir, I just got here like five minutes ago. My food's not even finished eating. And there's been a guy in the bathroom since I got here getting high on drugs, and the door's still locked. You guys are just trying to kick me out of here for no reason. I told them I'll buy a, a, a burger every 15 minutes if it's a 15-minute loitering. They're like, no, you have to go. Then as soon as I left, I seen like an Escalade, like a gang unit, like a, like a, like a higher up police vehicle. I could see like the bars on the window and the laptop in the front. And I knew it was a, like a higher up gang unit. It wasn't a, it wasn't RCMP. 
And so I, I, I started walking down the street. It's the middle of the night. I just got kicked out of this um, Timmy's. I went on Google and I found out the snow apparently shut down the, the, um, the ferry for the night. So I couldn't get to my friend's house and I was stuck now in North Vancouver. And I'm walking down this very quiet road, very quiet road. Then, um, all of a sudden, uh, uh, a bus comes. So I go like this, I'm, I'm waving the bus, like three, four people get on the bus and they're like, yeah, sorry, this is a lot. This is a lot. We're not taking any more people. I'm like, what do you mean you're not taking people? This They just got on. I'm not getting off this bus. They're like, all right, get back on the bus. Like, same thing with the other bus driver. Like, he did not want me to get on the bus, and he was very angry that I did get on the bus. And I go to look at my phone. It's dead at this time. So, I like, at this point, I'm sketching out full-blown. Like, I literally just seen a guy with a sniper rifle pointing at me into a McDonald's. I know I've been getting followed for the past week. All these crazy things are happening. And... I go up to this like short little blonde chick that was kind of looking at me. She was looking at me. So I go up to her. I'm like, ma'am, can I please use your phone, please? She's like, yeah. Pulls out her phone. I go to make a phone call to call my friend to say I won't be there. And she's like, oh, I got to get off at this stop now. And then I'm like, what? And then she doesn't even ask for her phone back. She just gets up and starts um, prancing, like skipping off the bus. I'm like, what is going on here? <laughs> this girl just like, follow me. She starts skipping off this bus into a, like a part, like into behind a building. And this building, like once you drove into it, the back parking lot was so high up and it had a barrier around it. Once you drive in that parking lot, the only way you back out of that business is back out through up the ramp. She starts running like up, like she, she's probably like 50, 40 feet ahead of me at this time. She tur I turn the corner and I see a, a, a vehicle parked there with a guy wearing a trench coat, super sketch looking. And he's, and she just continues running. She does not stop. I still have this girl's phone, literally. And she just disappeared into the bushes. Then this guy's like, come over here, buddy. I need to talk to you. And he's like flipping open his trench coat, like get a strap or something. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I run for my life, get get to the road, and what do you know? Fire fire truck, like a like a not an actual fire truck, but like it's like a police vehicle, same kind of thing, but it was a a fire vehicle. You know what I mean? I go like this to the guy. I'm like, all of a sudden, I'm like, yo, roll down your window. He rolls it down like this much. And I'm like, I'm like, yo, sir, like, my phone's dead. I'm not from this area and stuff. Is there a restaurant or anything around here? Like, and all of a sudden, he's just like, looks at me, looks at me weird, says something into a radio, then rolls back up the window. Then I'm like, waiting there, like, he's talking, looking at me, sketchy. And all of a sudden, he's just like, I got to go. Someone will be here in like five minutes to pick you up. I'm like, like, <laughs> Con just constant like people just keep telling me these things that don't make sense and i'm like someone's gonna pick me up no 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 so i start speed walking he just casually drives away and what do you know though that's the same escalade that i seen earlier pulls up and he gets out and he says my last name he says my last name and i'm like he's like what's up da 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 how's it going you need a ride anywhere it looks like you're gonna get frostbite i'm like sir it's like zero degrees plus one minus one like it just at the freezing temperature i don't need a ride and everything's good then like two of them get out you know what i mean out of the out of the vehicle and they like kind of swarm me one's behind me one's in front of me and um they're like are you sure you don't need a ride anywhere it's cold out here buddy are you sure your heart doesn't hurt and i'm like no 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 i'm good i'm good then all of a sudden they turned around to see if anyone was looking Literally just came up, grabbed me, threw me in the back of this Escalade, and turned around and was like, you're under the mental health act. You have no rights. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm literally, I'm in the back of this cop car trying to boot the window off the, off the thing. And he turns around like in a very calm voice. You think he'd be mad that a guy's in his backseat trying to kick out a window. And he's like, don't worry, buddy. We're going to take care of you. Don't worry. We got you. And he clicks the camera button, like the recording thing. And my word, he clicks the camera. So it wasn't recording anymore. 
he literally talked into his fingers like there's a microphone he's like delta 2 said my name 24 now deceased and i was like mm. I'm, i i heard that i was like i was like what so I, I start kicking more like for my life and he's like you can't he's like don't worry buddy we're gonna take care of you he starts driving and i'm like where are we going he's like we're going to the north vancouver hospital and we're just driving in like like the middle of nowhere, like a dark area, like where you would off somebody. And we eventually get to the hospital and like, it's closed down. There's no lights on this entrance. we like, it looked dead. It looked like you couldn't even get into the building. The hospital is never closed. And he gets me out of this car, brings me in. There's no one in the lobby. The lights are off, but there was a lady behind the counter. The cops like, let's go get a room for this guy and let's go check his heart. He's saying he has heart problems. They bring me into a room, they strap my legs down, my wrists, my wrists, my ankles, my neck, everything. And while while I'm while I'm in this room, it's kind of like in a room and like there's curtains and like into a bigger operating area and like you could see people move around and stuff. And there was like a weird guy in there. Like there was all these people in hospital gowns and there was just a random guy dressed in normal clothing. That shouldn't have been there. And he was just staring at me this whole time with a big gold chain on. And he was like praying or doing something weird. And I was like, this is like, this is insane. Then the police officer comes into the, um, into the, um, hospital room. And he's like, he has the same laptop that was, would have been in the car. He's staring and he sits down. He's like, oh, I just need to ask you a few questions. Does anyone know you're in BC right now? Have you used any credit cards? documentation linking that you're in this province right now. And I look at him. I'm like, why, what are you going to do? Erase my profile. I heard what you said to the, I heard what you guys said now deceased. Like, do you have kids? This is sick. And like, and he literally, he thought about it when I said, do you have kids? You see him like thinking, like, you know what I mean? And he's like, he slammed the thing and just left. Then a girl come came in and she's like, if you don't take this pill, I'm going to come in in five more minutes and put this needle in you and you're going to go to sleep. I'm like, I don't give you consent to do this. She's like, you have no rights. You're under the mental health act. A, like, you know what I mean? A goldfish has more rights than you. And then, then I'm like, they pretty much give me the pill. I, I take it. I started like getting very drowsy. I pass out. And then I wake up. Like I later found out it was like five, six days later. So I don't know what, I, like, I must have been just dosed with drugs for so long. I woke up in a padded white room and they were like, uh, they just brought me in a room to see a doctor. And I literally like, I, I like went to the bathroom while I was passed out for those six days. There was like meal trays there. Like I wasn't, I did not wake up for six days. People must have been coming in, bringing me meals and stuff. I would go to see the doctor. He's like, you don't have any thoughts of hurting yourself or other people. I'm like, no. Like, no. And he's like, all right, you're good to go. And then, like, they released me. And, like, they released me. And, like, I was so, like, don't How long ago the... was that, Matthew? Like, five, six years ago. Well, and, and that's just after it started, all of the targeting started. Yeah. With, yeah, within a week after, I, I started to, like, instantly I started noticing it. You know what I mean? And, Yeah. And a week after, and then I leave, and um, I didn't, like, I didn't... Did like, you I, have I, anywhere I was, to go then, Matthew? Were you homeless I, then, or did you have somewhere to go? In Alberta, I did. While I was in Alberta, I did. But the fact that, like, I had people coming to my place, literally trying to kick in my door to come poke me up to take money from me, because I was making good money at that time, and, like, a lot of people were using me as a friend. And I started cutting them off saying, I don't want to hang out with them anymore. And then like, it flipped to like, yo, we're just going to, we're just going to rob. Like literally I had people jumping out of like minivans with like knives, like four people chasing me as fast as they can, trying to poke me up. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> I would just hang out with people. I... I don't know if you just seen that, Roy. A car just went by and threw a fucking, uh, a McDonald's cup at me. <laughs> Do you see that McDonald's cup? Yeah. Did you just hear them drive by and throw that? No, out? I didn't. You should have turned the camera around so we could have seen the play. Oh, my God. Crazy. So I wonder if there's a camera in there where you are 
So there's probably a camera. No, there. there, there is, there is, but like, oh uh, right. <laughs> what are the odds I'm chilling here, and a car just comes around the corner, and the kid says, just someone just says, yelled something out the window. I'm like, oh what? And a McDonald's cup smash off the window. Can you switch the camera thing around? Yes, you can. How do you do that? Okay. Oh, that's I don't know. It. Where did? Oh no, is it empty? Yeah, they must have threw it out the wall or something. I don't know if that, that, but yeah, they just literally threw this McDonald's cup at me out a window while I'm trying to do this interview. <laughs> It's insane, but let's let's get back to that. Um, let's yeah. get back to the story. Okay. Um. Right. So you weren't homeless then. Your friends were using you, and you. Yeah, I was. I was, ma I was making. I was making. I was making good money. People were using me. Um, it was. Yeah, it was just bad. And but I was hanging out with people I shouldn't have. Like I should have seen that coming. You know what I mean? But I go to. I leave the hospital. I go to um a, a trucker stop. You know what I mean? Um, I was so doped up on, on drugs that they're giving me in the hospital. It was hard for me to talk. It was hard for me to walk. And like, I just felt so out of it. It was insane. But I get up to this. It was weird. It was dark. There was like a highway on one side, a highway on one side. And in the middle, there was like a Wendy's convenience store duo. And like, I ran to it. Like I ran down the highway, over the highway, down to this thing. I go into the bathroom and I start bawling my eyes out. Literally, I I started bawling my eyes out. I'm down holding my hair and whatnot. And a guy comes into the bathroom. I go up to him and I grab him by the scruff. And I'm like, sir, you need to help me. You need to help me. And he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. What's going on? I'm like, I can't. I, I just need a ride somewhere, sir. Like, I need to go to Edmonton. He's like, he's like, I have kids. Don't worry. I got a truck outside. He, he walked back out of the bathroom kind of with me to like the inside and pointed out the window. He's like, that's my truck. It's open. Go out there and wait for me. You could jump in. So I'm like, I'm like, even in my time when I was like crying and stuff, I was like, wait, that was a little bit too easy. You know what I mean? Like, this guy wants me to go in his truck and stuff. And I was like, but I needed help so bad. I went into the truck and I was like, I ended up going into this truck and I was like, so out of it and whatnot. I, I passed out. I passed out. I was, I was still on the drugs they were giving me and I passed out. And I woke up like eight late hours later and the guy was just driving the truck and we're like an hour away from Edmonton. Nothing happened. He's like, Oh, what's up, buddy? You must've been tired. I'm like, I'm like, dude, good thing. You're like not a bad person. You know what I mean? Um, like I appreciate this. I got up, he gave me a cigarette. I smoked it in the truck with him. And then we get to, um, North side Edmonton eventually like an hour later, an hour and a half we get to, um, a trucker stop and we get there and um i'm like thank you so much sir like you saved my life thank you and he's like no problem just take care i go into this trucker stop and um like use my phone go on my phone go on my facebook and like my mom has been messaging me for like two weeks now saying like i'm the north vancouver police department has been like calling her saying i'm a missing person and then i'm like as soon as i seen that i'm like no way Cause like that night I was in the back seat of the car. They said my name, my age now deceased. And I was like, no way. The North Vancouver police department reported me as a missing person while I was in their custody that night. They abducted me, forcibly confined me, dosed me with drugs. I was sexually assaulted in the hospital just cause like I was tied down and they had to bend my like my dick into a cup, just go to the bathroom. I wasn't giving these people consent to do that. And, and they reported me as a missing person. And then I seen on my message re requests on the top, I go to it and an account, I can even send you screenshots after I get off this. I still have it. I saved it. An account saying it was named on Facebook, a Leo lawless, like a Leo lawless. And I'm like, wait, that's like Leo lawless. And as no picture, like no post, it was like just an account that someone created. And it's like, hi, my name is Constable da, 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 from the North Vancouver the Police Department. You're reported as a missing person. We just don't want to know about your whereabouts. Thanks, buddy. With a smiley face. And 
I'm like, you just want to know about my whereabouts. <laughs> I was with you that night. You know what I mean? So it was, it was kind of crazy. And that was, that was pretty much when it started. You know what I mean? That was the whole introduction to the gang stalking. And it was so, pretty intense. Matthew, did they diagnose you with anything? Before they no. got you, so you no. got no diagnoses or nothing. No, no, my whole no, my whole life I was smart. I never took medication, nothing like that. You know what I mean? I when you live you your said, whole life, yeah. Well, no, because they must have pumped you full of antipsychotics when they injected you. I I think they gave me held off, or held off, or held all, whatever. Okay, not familiar. It's with something. That. It's something they give people that like, so you can't fight back. You pretty much are just in a drowsy state the whole time. Yeah. And yeah, they're giving me held off while I was there the whole time. But um, yeah. Then I got back to Edmonton, and I I didn't know what to think, man. I was scared. I was very scared. And um, you, 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 you said that your, 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 your mother had started getting worried about you. Yeah, she was messaging me because the North Vancouver um, Police Department got in contact with her the whole time I was in the hospital. And was pretty much saying, like, we don't know his whereabouts and we're worried about him. He's reported as a missing person. But, like, the whole time they did know where I was. They're the ones that put me there. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so what about the street theater and the gang stalking? How long after did so that continued and got worse? Or yeah, yeah, like um, yeah, I did for sure. I got back to Edmonton, and um, it was pretty much exact same thing in BC. But like, I I feel like every province it's a little different. I felt like BC was the most rampant while I was in BC. It was, like, I was going through insane stuff. You know what I mean? Like, insane stuff. The first week before, like, I went to the hospital and I was chilling with Buddy, um, like, we, I, we'd walk into a Starbucks or something, then, like, the guy behind me would be like, someone just shoot this guy in the head already. Like, a random guy sitting in the Starbucks or something. And I turn around, I'm like, yo, what did this guy just say? And he's like, I didn't say anything. I think you should leave. Just, like... Same face and the same weird expression everyone would give me when I try talking. Yeah. You know what I mean? Then I go up to the Starbucks people. I'm like, yo, I need the phone. They're like, you need the phone? We're really busy right now. Like, just like, like, I don't even know what it, it was insane. Like, I was just going through crazy things. You know what I mean? I go into Timmy's um, cars. As soon as I pull up, like, two cars are the same brand, brand new, decked out license plates that like you can't track it has dealer plates on it and shit and then people would get out sit right behind me be like two in the morning and then like they'd start talking about weird shit like oh like like they'd start talking about how they have a lot of guns and like how they like to hide in places and like when things that are supposed to pop out pop out they just blast them and like i'm like what <laughs> like you know what i mean and like and like because i i've been hiding like i would Literally, it got to the point where I'd be in a restaurant or in a thing, and I'd run out in crisscross because, like, I like I was so worried. Like, literally, I had so many people. Like, they they got to the point where like they made me feel like people were trying to like hurt. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'd have people coming into Tim Hortons like with their hand in their waistband, walking around the whole time, like they're gripping on something, just doing very weird yeah. things that intimidate you or you're walking through the mall then someone would open up their coat quick and have like a weapon on their thing then shut it quick and just weird stuff like that you know what i mean yeah. but when i got to edmonton that's when it like really really got bad you know what i mean like all day 24 7 um like really bad as soon as i got back back to edmonton I was like, yo, I got to go back to Niagara. I got to get home. I got to go to Niagara. You know what I mean? Because um, I went out to Alberta in 2015, 2016. And I was out there for a few years before my um, targeted actually started. And I hadn't seen my mom for a good six years. And I was like, you know what? This is a good time to go to um, home. COVID just started at that time. So I was like, you know what I mean? Um, I got to go home to see my mother. And 
Well, COVID didn't happen right at that. I got back to Edmonton. I was there maybe for like six months, and then COVID hit. But I don't know. It was just I went through a bunch of stuff. You know what I mean? I I'm trying to think back to it. There's just too many times and stuff. If you want to ask me a couple of questions though, I'll right, be down. So when you went to your mother's, what happened when you got to mum's? Okay. Um. Well, I, I stayed in Edmonton for a little bit. I tried my best because um, I, I couldn't afford an airplane ticket. The buses were down. There was no, there was no nothing because COVID just started, right? Right. So um, I went online. I went to paparide.com and it was like people that are driving across Canada and like they post it and saying like, yo, this is the car I have. How many seats? If you want, you pay like, it's very cheap. You know what I mean? And like as soon as I got back to Ontario, I, I'm like, yo, I'm safe. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I get to my mom's house and she's like, sorry, you can't come in because of COVID. You can't come in because of COVID. And my sister and my mom lived together. And my, and my sister was a manager at Swiss Chalet at the time. She went to work every day. She was around how, how many people get just as much of a chance of me bringing COVID into the house. As, but at the time, I didn't understand. Because, like, I knew what gang stalking was a little bit. Because, um, actually, can I go back a little bit? I forgot course, something. Well, well, when I was in Edmonton, I was getting gang stalked really bad. Um, I, like, every every restaurant I'd go into, they'd always kick me out within, like, 10, 20 minutes. Like, <laughs> I, and um, when COVID first started coming around, like, they wouldn't let you in a store for more than a couple minutes. You just had to grab your stuff and leave. And I felt, like, very afraid being out in the middle of the night out in the city where, like, all of these people are driving by me, going by with air compressors in their car, going, <laughs> making noises like they're shooting guns out their windows. Just stupid shit. You know what I mean? Just crazy stuff. Constantly revving their cars around, hitting their gas by me. But I'm in the 7-Eleven, and as soon as I walk in, the employee's are like, yeah, you can't be in here more than two minutes. I'm like, yeah, I knew you were going to say that, brother. I'll be quick. And then all of a sudden, you he says, I can't wait till the bottle of pops and bags of chips just start exploding. You know what I mean? And I'm like, he's pretty much saying, like, I can't wait till someone just shoots through the window and, like, a bunch of shit just starts getting sparked up in the in the 7-Eleven. I, I go up to him. I'm like, what did you just say? He's like, oh, I didn't say anything. Then, like, two gang stalkers came in, a guy and a girl. As soon as I walked in, they just mean mugged me and, like, started doing their intimidation, walking around. Like, you know what did they do? Then they go up. They bought two slushies. They went to go pay for it. And it got declined. And you, just who I am as a person, I pulled out my bank card and I tapped it. I didn't even think twice. I was like, boop. And all of a sudden, they looked at each other. They're like, like, like this guy isn't that big, big of a piece of shit after all. You know what I mean? Whatever the people are telling them. <laughs> then they're like, they call me outside. They're like, do you need a ride anywhere, bro? I'm like, yes, I could. I need a ride to a 24-hour Timmy's right now. <laughs> they're like, okay, jump in. And like, he turned around in the car and he's like, you're getting gang stalked. I'm like, what? He's like, when I dropped you off at the Timmy's, I couldn't say anything at the store, but you're getting gang stalked. And I'm like, I, I didn't know what he was saying. He's like, just when you get to the Timmy's, get out, Google it. And as soon as I got to the Timmy's and I Googled it, I was like, I was like, yo, this guy just saved my life, bro. Like, <laughs> it started making sense then to you, Matthew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I seen, like I seen all of their, um, like what they do, their fighting, like gaslighting and trap like every word for word what they're saying and other people are saying they're happening to them identical like to the t yeah. and i was like yo this is insane so that guy like i'm pretty sure he was a gang stalker and i'm pretty sure he did tell me what the program was and that was my first understanding actually what the program was after being in it for a good maybe a couple weeks in bc and then when i came back to alberta i was maybe in alberta for like eight months a year so I, for the first little while, at least eight months, I did not know what was going on. And like, yeah. I would be up for weeks because I was so afraid to go to sleep. You know what I mean? Like, it was, it was really insane. But um, fast forward back to um, when I got back to Ontario, I got there. And, yeah, my mom told me I couldn't come in the house. And at that had time, you had like, a fall out before, Matthew? Had no. You had, no. Oh. No. Oh, Everything wow. was good. When I left home at 19, um, she's like, I'm proud of you for going out to college and like moving out there and getting your life together. If you ever want to come back, you're welcome. 
I kept in contact with her the whole time I was out in Alberta. I worked the whole time I was out in Alberta. I went to college while I was out in Alberta. Like, no, there was no reason why she would have said, no, you can't come in. Especially when my sister is in the house and it's winter. And and the dog that they have is even going inside. The dog is even going inside, but the son has to stay in a car in the driveway. (laughs) Literally. And at that time, I was like, all right. As long as I don't have to go on the streets and get gang stalked, I'm, I'm cool with sorry that. to laugh, Matthew. You can't make this shit up, can you? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, man. Pretty much. Oh, oh, bless you, my friend. Oh, Matthew. But yeah, so so I'm staying in like one of my mom's like extra cars in the driveway, and the whole time I'm in this driveway, cars are just man, man, man. They're like, you know what I mean? Randomly at four in the morning, like it's a quiet little town. She lives um right outside Niagara, like Thorold, Ontario. It's a very small town. I think there's like thirty thousand people at that time of night. If you stand on a porch, you maybe see three, four cars in a couple hours. You don't <laughs> see boom, 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 and like you see them going up the street, and like thirty, forty feet before they get like by the house, like. Bang. And, like, some even, like, will go right at the end of the driveway, hold the brake, and... And I run down the driveway, and, like, like you know what I mean? What the fuck are you doing? And then, like, as soon as I get 10 feet from their car, they just... Fuck you through their window and just, just go. It's constant. Just harassment, 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 harassment. Even while I was in a driveway, I was getting harassed. And then, after, like, two weeks... I did not leave this driveway for two weeks. I swear to God. Because when I was when I was in Edmonton and whatnot, like I went to BC and I came back. And like when I came back, I didn't have a place because I was in BC for a little while. So when I came back, I was on the streets and shit. And once I got, got to Ontario, I was like, yo, my solstice, my family, like this can't happen anymore. You know what I mean? I like I thought I like I was in the clear. And when I did get to Ontario, it did stop for a good five days. When I did get to Ontario, I did not notice people like nothing. Like it did feel like it was better. Oh, yeah. After five days of me getting there and being in in the driveway, I I did notice I st- did notice weird shit started happening. And then I noticed like at least two like a week after it picked up, my my um my family comes out and pretty much like yeah we you can't stay in the car anymore. Our neighbors are complaining that there's someone in a driveway. Literally, that's what that that was their excuse. You can't stay in the driveway because like other people are complaining that there's people living in a driveway. My mom rents, so she's like, I don't want to get kicked out of here because like someone's not on the lease living in the driveway. And it's like, oh my god, bro! Like, and they kicked me off the property. And as soon as I got off the property, it was like rampid, 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 like. No, every Tim Hortons I went into, I'd either get harassed by the employees there. Like I'd buy food. They come like literally just like, you have to go. They would just tell me I have to go. Do, do you know, Matthew, we've only ch- been chatting for an hour. You come across as one of the nicest people I could have, you could ever meet. And I mean yeah? that. You come thank, across thank you, very thank genuine you, thank and you, very thank decent you. and respectful. Thank and you, man. I, 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 I mean that. I appreciate that, man. I do, I do, I do pride myself on having a heart. You know what I mean? I, I do, I do care. I do. My whole life, I have put other people ahead of me and stuff. You know what I mean? There's times yeah. where, like, and the yeah, man. I, that, I, man I, I appreciate that, bro. I do appreciate no, I that. Mean I do it. appreciate you saying that. I mean it because you talk from the heart and you're not full of shit. You know. And so, sorry, I'm rambling, kind of going everywhere. It's oh, just, it's, I, I it's usually don't talk. Is. I usually don't talk like spitting like this. It's just once I get on the gang stalking and like, cause I never really had a, a chance to vent myself or anything. I, I kind of just notice no, myself it's speaking like you're coming very out quickly. With everything that you're coming out with, because it will help other people and it will help other people to understand, you know, because this is starting to come out, you know, after all these years, the truth is starting to come out. And the more people yeah, 100%. tell him the truth, the more it's going to help others. Yeah, hundred percent. But yeah. um, I I 
I kind of got like I like um other things to say. I don't know if you want to ask me questions. I kind of feel like I know why my targeting started. I well, guess it was kind why, of well, tell us why you think it started. I I guess I fucked up a little bit with that yeah. credit card. Remember that credit card I used? Yeah. yeah. After like after the gang stalking started picking up and I was back in Edmonton, this is before yeah. I went to Niagara. I was like, hey, when did this start? When did this start? And I was thinking, I'm like, yeah, pretty much at the BC thing, like when those cops came to talk to me, and right yeah. as soon as I got, to how BC, did they to... know that it was you who spent the I... money on the card? Overnight, too. Overnight, literally yeah, overnight. They would have had to go you? to the store. I don't know. They would have had to go to the store, subpoena the video footage. Oh. No, they wouldn't have looked at it at three in the morning because they're lazy and it's a, fu it's a, it's it's a. Fraud under five thousand. They really don't care about that, and they knew it was me. Everything the next day, but I I go on Google, and um, because I still had a, I took a picture of this credit card, right? I don't know why I took a picture of it, but I took a picture of it, and I go back on the credit card and I type the name on Google, and it pops up like Liberal Team Member of Canada, like this guy was a political team member of Canada and he works in the government. So like I'm uh, I'm hundred I'm hundred percent sure like he put me on the list, hundred uh, percent sure they black they blacklisted me. There I go. This, this guy's a piece of shit, bro. <laughs> like literally, they're like, yo, this guy's frauding a liberal team member of Canada, and like I could I can honestly still send you a picture of this credit card, and like you can honestly Google it if you wanted to. Um. Yeah, that I that's I I'm hundred percent sure that's that's why it happened. Hundred percent. But at the same time, I've heard that like once you before your targeting picks up, they watch you for a little bit for at least a year before. So I don't really know how that could have happened. How like I found the card, then within overnight or like a week, my gang stalking started. So maybe they could have been watching me beforehand, and then when like I did that, they're like, "Yo, fuck this guy!" Like, if we were gang stalking him, he probably wouldn't have been able to do what he just did, and like. We should start this gang stalking right now. So, like, it's either they started it just randomly because I did that to whoever I did it to, or they're doing it and they just decided to start it at that point. Because, like, I'm pretty confident that, like, they do watch people. You know what I mean? I, I, I think most people to. are. I think most people are profiled from a very yeah. young age. From a very yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. And um, most targets, um, like yourself and myself, and the honest ones, they admit to effing up. You know, they yeah, like, the wrong, to be they honest, Roy, I didn't really want like I don't want to tell people like, yo, I found a credit card in the. But I was I was middle of winter. I know where to go. I went to welfare. I called everyone I knew. No one would help me. And. It was like godsend. I was walking through a parking lot. There was a, like a black credit card on the ground. I was like, you know what? Like, I will tell the police what happened. Like, I'll go to court and be like, I had nowhere to go. And I'll explain them. You know what I mean? Uh, and yeah, like I wasn't staying another night with nowhere to go in minus 30. Feeling my fingertips burning another night. No, it wasn't happening. Uh, so I, just, I did that. And that's, that's what happened. Yeah. So, do you remember the first night that you were ever that you were homeless, that you didn't have a roof over your head, and why was that, Matthew? Because living on the streets. Well, when I, when I when I got back to Edmonton, and um, when I got back to Edmonton, the place that I was like staying at, living with people and whatnot, yeah. like it was like shared accommodations. I was too much like, I was losing my mind. Like, what just happened in Vancouver? I come back. I was reported as a missing person whatnot. Like, I was too out of it to stay. Like, you know what I mean? I did not trust the people I was now living with. I did not, like, I just, like, you know what I mean? I didn't even know what was going on. So, yeah, like, pretty much when the targeted targeting picked up, that's when, like, I couldn't, I couldn't get, obtain a place. Like, I, so hard for me to get a job. Roy, I've been, like since um April third, I've handed out over like a hundred resumes. I went to like seven temp agencies. I just called like three of them again today. They's like, like it's like I can't get work. Like it's impossible, bro. I can't. I can't. It's impossible for me to make friends. Every time I make a friendship, like if I'm just out and about and I meet a random person, and I hit it off with them. 
Yeah. It's cool. But then like the next time I talk to them, they want nothing to do with me. It, yeah. Like it's, it's totally changed. And it's like, what yeah. could have happened in the time? Some people yeah, yeah. are bipolar and they just switch their opinion, but yeah. not, not everyone does that. Once yeah. you like start noticing it, that like, it's impossible for you to build a relationship. Well, and you, all the ones you, you in the real have... world, Matthew, you seem like the sort of person that would fit in anywhere, you know, because you're a big personality and you you, you come across as a very nice person, and I mean that. Thank you, you Roy. Know? Thank you. I do. I mean it. And thank um, you, Roy. Uh, and part of me wonders if this, because it's an isolation tactic. Basically, they mentally isolated me mentally. For over 28 years, I wasn't allowed to have friends. I wasn't allowed to have a girlfriend. I wasn't allowed to have mates in my life. And so I was mentally isolated for over 28 years. I had a female friend for a few years, but I, I was even mentally isolated from her because she, I don't think she really, she liked me all that much because she liked money, you know. For so, sure, for sure. You know, so, you know, which is fair play to her. She wanted somebody with money. But um, what I'm saying is, is I wasn't really allowed to have people in my life. And when I did hit it off with people, like you said, you know, they didn't want to know you. You know, next time you sort of knew them or, or, it, or it was a funny relationship or a funny friendship. No, 100%. So, so you've been on the streets for how long now, Matthew? Uh, five since my targeting, since my targeting, brother, since my targeting. Unbelievable! And what uh, can't you get any social housing? Isn't there any? Man, like since I've been in like um Ontario, like I did have a play, like like. I just know I'm not going to spend all this money, get a place, and then as soon as I get a place, it becomes a haunted house or, like, you know what I mean? Like, as soon as you get there, noises are happening, people are acting weird. No, like, it's like yeah. you're being watched 24-7 and you feel like you're, you feel like you're in a jail cell with 20 cameras everywhere in your own home. Yeah. Like, you don't even feel comfortable in your own home. Yeah. Like, literally, three in the morning, like, I, like you know what I mean? I, I, as soon as I get, like, get undressed to go in the shower... Like, people would knock on my, like, wall. So, like, just to let me know they know I'm naked. You know what I mean? Or, like, if I'm going to the bathroom or something, they knock on the door. It's like, just any, anything that, like, you want some privacy, a little bit of privacy with, they'd let me know, like, yo, we're here. We're here. We're watching you. Then, like, the landlord, when I first went in there, he was, like, he was all chill. Then within, like, a week, he starts acting weird. Like, like every time I'm around him, he starts acting weird. Like, he starts talking like a gang stalker. Like he's doing street theater. He's saying weird yeah. things around me that does yeah. not make sense. Yeah. And I pretty much like it got to the point where like people were assaulting me in the home. Like a guy that was living there, he was like a big guy, like six four. He'd come up to me, he was a drunk, and he's like, Can I get twenty bucks? I'm like, well, here's twenty bucks. And then like a, like three, four days later, he did the same thing. He called me on the staircase and he's like, bro, can I have some money for some liquor? I'm like, bro, like you're almost in your fifties. I can't really be doing this. I have a prepaid visa in my back pocket. I has $75 on it. I just activated last night. You could take it, spend 15 or 10 bucks on it, but bring it back. And I want the receipt. He goes buys the liquor because I know he got liquor because he was drunk that night later right. called the credit card company was like it's lost or stolen so then when I would go to use it later then he comes back and he's like this card isn't even working bro you sent me there to get liquor and that wasn't cool bro it's like bro you came to ask me for money I gave you money it didn't end up working so I'm I'm the bad guy because yeah. I didn't have money to give you Oh. And he's then, then like a day later, he comes up to my door at like three in the morning, starts smashing on it like repetitively. And I'm like, go away, go away. He's smashing on it. As soon as I open it, he grabs me by the throat, threw me like threw me. I'm only like five, eight hundred and thirty pounds. I'm not that big. He grabs me by the throat, threw me into the room, starts trying to smash all my cameras off the walls and shit. 
he threw me into like, you know what I mean? I had to like literally pull out a pocket knife and I was like, yo, bounce out of my place or I'm going to poke you up. Literally. Just came in my house or threatening my life. And as soon as I did that, he did walk out. You know what I mean? And like, I don't like calling the police. I'm not really a snitch. I've never been like that. I don't really like calling the police. But if I'm in a house and all these people think they could do whatever they want to me and I'm not going to call the police, I'm calling the cops, bro. You just came in my house and attacked me and shit. I'm calling the cops. There's cameras in the hallways. I got cameras in my room. I'm calling the police. Like, you know what I mean? And the police get there and they're like, um, oh, we can't charge him with assault. Oh, it's your word against his. I'm like, bro, there's cameras in the hallway. You could just, you could see on the cameras and shit, him barging into my room. I didn't give him permission to come in my room at three in the morning. And they're all, oh, it's like, pretty much we can't do anything. Pr- pretty much they said they can't do anything about it. So then at that point, the, I'm like, I'm not even going back to this place, bro. I literally just left. I left all my shit there and I just left. I was like, I'll go on the streets, bro. <laughs> literally, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not paying money to be getting attacked and feel fearful the whole time I'm in my place. No. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's just not happening. So, like, ever since that time, like, two years ago, like, I had that place. And as soon as I went into that place, which I knew they would do, like, if they, if they could follow me anywhere I go on the streets and make anywhere I go on the streets how they want it to go, like, they, they control the environment and shit, then if I'm in a house, they're going to control it till there's no, they're going to drive yeah. me literally lunatic in this house. So, I was like, it's, it's not happening. And I've... I've literally, I've not been able to like get a job. The first four years I was gang stock. Like I was just trying to survive to the point where, um, just to survive, you know what I mean? So I never did bother looking for work, but ever since April, I have been looking for work and like, I, nothing, no callbacks, no email, nothing. And I knew that would happen. You know what I mean? I knew it was next to impossible for me to get a place. But like after five years, I was like, you know what? I never tried it. Let's just at least try. So if it doesn't work, I could at least say I tried that route. You know what I mean? I I, I, I hope and pray things will start to change for the better for you soon, Matthew. Because it's yeah, thank you, Roy. Like thank you. really had a shit time, mate. And fingers crossed that so we'll, we'll be able to find you some friends as well, you know, that are yeah, on. The thank you, page. man. Thank you. Well, no, I hope so. Because um, I'm sure that in the comments, somebody's going to want to be your friend for sure, you know, because there's a lot of TIs in Canada as well. 100%. Like, I've been, I wanted to do an interview for the longest time, man. It just like, I don't know, man. I just, I don't even feel like myself anymore nowadays. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's weird. I don't feel, I don't have the motivation I used to have. I don't, yeah. I, I just feel like a totally different person. And it probably has a lot to do with the remote neutral monitoring. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Try and, and believe uh, that, that, that the corner will turn, Matthew. Because I, never, I try and believe that the corner will turn for the better for you. Because I never believed that it would for me. You know, but a few months ago, because they took me over to the dark side and um, they allowed me back in the light in October of last year of 2023. So I'm still going through this healing process myself. And, you know, all, all of my friends in the TI community, I try to, you know, say, please believe it will end. And, you know, you're not on your own and you will have friends and you have got friends. And I'm always at the end of the phone as well, Matthew. And as I said, I'm, you, you're more than welcome to join our WhatsApp group. And I'll introduce <clears> you to <throat> some more friends that you can chat with. Yeah, I, I appreciate that, bro. I do. Like, I appreciate um the interview today. I appreciate the talk. I apologize for kind of being like scatterbrained and rambling all the time. But no, um, you haven't. You've been very eloquent and you've told it as it is. You know, All right, thank you, Roy. People, thank you. No, appreciate and, and appreciate your honesty. You yeah, know, thank you, Roy. Thank you. Not at all. So, what's the plans for tonight? Where are you going to sleep tonight, then? I, I'm pretty much as um, posted in the woods. Like I got a tent in the woods. Um, deep in the woods. Right. 
What's the um, weather like at this time? Is it is it bearable? It was really nice today. It was 30 degrees, real feel 34. Oh, wow. So, yeah, it was a hot day today. It was a hotter day. So, today, what about sure. the nights? Are they bearable in the tent? For, yeah, for sure. Like, I've... Yeah, like, in Edmonton, like, I've been... Like, while I was getting G-Stock, I've been homeless in the middle of winter and, like, Alberta gets to minus 40 and stuff. But, like, even if it was winter, I'd be able to survive outside. But um, right now, it only gets to, like, 15, 20 at night. So, it's not bad at all. You know what I mean? I got a sleeping bag in there and whatnot. Clothes... Some okay. sweaters, stuff like that. And nobody knows where you are there. They don't know where your stuff is. Well, like, I don't know. Like, a couple of times I've came back and there's been slits in it. And, like, oh. I've had to, like, rip, patch it up and stuff like that. Um, But I assume they know where I'm at because, like, they always do. They always have. Yeah, like, I could jump in a taxi, get out, go into a subway, get out of the subway, jump into a car, or... And then as soon as I get out, go into an empty parking lot, and then there'll be, like, within 10 yeah. minutes, the whole place lights up. People are running by, ah, da, 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 laughing like they're on a sitcom show. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it just, like, just fake. Super fake. Yeah. Anything else you'd like to add, Matthew? Oh, how long have we been on the interview for? Um... I don't know, about an hour. Um, I don't know. Uh, probably just over an hour. Okay, like, um, we covered, like, how, how I think my gang stalking happened, yeah. where it started. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know. I feel like I just have a lot more to discuss, but maybe we could do that off the interview or... Well, like, on a what call we can do is... It's fully up to you. It is what you can do is, is I'll post this... And then anything that you think of in the next few days, week or whatever, try and make a note of it to yourself, and then uh, and then we can always do we, we can always do a follow up for you, Matthew. No, for sure, for sure. Um, do you think like after we cut the interview, we could talk for five, ten more of minutes? Of course. Before... Of course. All right. All right. All right, yeah. well, thank you, Roy. Um, thank you Absolute to pleasure. all the platforms you post this on. Um, I hope you enjoyed the interview, and I hope you um yeah. got something from it. You know what I mean? Well, I I hope all good all, all good starts happening for you, Matthew. I really mean it. All right, and, thank you, Roy. Uh, Matthew, and I'm sure there's going to be people saying, "Oh, what's Matthew's number? Can I call him? Can I email him?" So. Will would, 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 um will they be contacting you, or do you want me to put your email in the um in the section, or do you want, or how do you want to? Um, I you could put my my name. Actually, not my name. My email would be good. My yeah, okay. my email would be good. All right, because then that saves loads of people coming to me and saying, Roy, what's this person's number, and what's Matthew's number, da da da. All right. Hundred percent. Would you want me to say it right now over the thing, or are you just gonna post uh, it? In no. Text? What I'll do is I'll put it in the description. When okay. I, okay. Uh, Sounds when good. I write up when, when, when I put it up on the uh, platforms. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. All right. All right. Well, I'll wrap this up then, Matthew, and we'll have a chat. All right. Cheers, guys. All right. Bless you, Matthew. Thank you.